we are excited to present details of our current study of nearshore great white shark behavior off the coast of Cape Cod. The exploding seal population has resulted in the presence of a large population of great whites. These sharks travel and feed in the same waters where people have been swimming and surfing for generations. We wanted to gain an understanding of nearshore great white behavior and enable this knowledge to be used in the development and deployment of shark mitigation and detection technologies. There's never been a published study looking at nearshore great white behavior off of Cape Cod. This information is critical if we are to enhance ocean safety. We utilize drones in this study primarily because they are highly accessible and also work well in the local environment where waters are relatively shallow, enhancing contrast as well as limiting shark swimming depths. These systems are highly advanced and when used correctly represent a powerful scientific tool. The majority of flights were conducted from town and private beaches in Truro, Wellfleet, and Orleans. It is important to understand that permits from the Cape Cod National Seashore are not required unless flying from actual park property. The park has done their best to convince people otherwise and in doing so have likely stymied research in this region, but it is simply not true. The park has no such authority. Data collection methods were relatively simple. Data was collected by flying up and down the coast until sharks were spotted and then following them for as long as we could. Somewhere in the vicinity of 50 hours of great white video was obtained over the course of a single summer. While most flights were conducted from the beach, we also utilized boats for some of this work. How do you then transform all this video footage of sharks into useful and quantifiable information on behavior? Well, a number of animal tracking studies, including a recent shark study out of Australia, have simply flown the drone directly over the animal and used the drone GPS position as the animal position. We wanted to have greater flexibility. We wanted to be able to track multiple sharks at once, determine distances from shore and seals, as well as to quantify interactions with seals and other objects. We also wanted to obtain a varied data set for AI development. As such, we flew at all different altitudes and observed sharks from all different gimbal angles and directions. While this added tremendous versatility to our study, it also added considerable complexity. Flight data provides the information you need to convert image data into actual shark positions. You have the GPS of the drone, as well as the heading, gimbal angle, altitude, and lens angle. You need to go from video footage of sharks to actual shark position on the image sensor. This requires that all of your videos be annotated. Alignment of data streams is also critical. We have developed software to align data streams with a high level of accuracy. We have developed further software that essentially converts any position on the image sensor into coordinates in latitude and longitude. This then allows us to obtain all sorts of useful information and shark parameters. One of the things that we've created as a useful visual tool are these video maps. They enable us to check and visualize all of our data. On the left, you have the actual video of the shark, and on the right, you have the track of both the shark and the drone, as well as some of the drone parameters. Shark is a larger gray circle and the drone the smaller white circle. The current tide is also shown over the day's tide, as well as the scale bar. It is striking how clear the water can be at times and how easy it is to spot sharks in the right conditions. Here we have a shark approaching a swimmer at head of the Meadow Beach in Truro. This is the first time I ever ran down the beach yelling shark. Fortunately, the woman was able to get out of the water in plenty of time. Here we have a seal approaching a shark before rapidly turning and swimming towards the beach. We have managed to capture a lot of similar interactions between sharks and seals, including several instances of sharks chasing after seals. Our software will enable us to better understand these interactions and quantify the distances and speeds involved. Actual hunting behavior is something we're really interested in, and we're working hard to learn more about this. While these videos are great to look at, it's the overall tracks of the sharks over extended periods of time that may contain the most valuable information. Here we switch to the full track of the shark. What we have found is that these sharks generally follow the shoreline for extended distances. This particular shark was tracked for over 25 minutes and was seen to mostly parallel the shore, traveling over a mile during this time. While not every track is exactly like this, this track is fairly typical. Here's another track where a shark is followed for 38 minutes and is seen to again parallel the shore, but this time reverse course at some point and head back towards the point from which it was originally spotted. While we did see some sharks head offshore and disappear into deeper water, this was not the norm, and so we suspect that transitions between deep offshore water and the shallow nearshore waters along this coast are infrequent in comparison to the length of time spent paralleling the shore. Here we see another interesting trajectory. This map represents 20 minutes of tracking of a shark circling just off Lacan Hollow Beach. The shark actually circled in this area for more than two hours. The lifeguards never saw it despite being shown exactly where it was. We are now in the process of analyzing all of this tracking data to quantify parameters related to behavior. We will obtain statistics on such parameters as distance from shore, direction of travel in relation to shoreline, and many others. We look forward to publishing the final results of this study shortly. 
What are the practical applications of this information? From the standpoint of shark detection, I think what we have found is very encouraging. If we consider the goal of protecting a swimming area using drones, we now have an idea as to how to go about doing this. We know that the overall trajectory of any shark coming towards the swimming area will most likely be paralleling the beach. We also know that these sharks will most likely already be in shallower nearshore waters, making them easier to see from the air. As such, we could envision placing drones on either side of the swimming area and flying them up and down the coast some distance. We know that these animals swim at relatively slow cruising speeds. If a shark is spotted 2,000 feet from the swimming area, people have approximately nine minutes to clear the water. Even at the relatively short distance of 500 feet, you're still looking at more than two minutes. We know that a shark swimming straight into the swimming area from deeper water is a significantly less likely event. This is all knowledge that can be used to optimize any system for shark detection in this area. It is not limited to drones. I also wanted to briefly mention a couple other things that we're working on. Tailbeat frequency and swim speed for a given shark length are an indication of behavior. Is the shark swimming to get from point A to point B and thus minimizing the cost of transport? Or is the shark swimming slower and thus likely foraging? These are things that we would like to understand and we are developing software to help answer these questions. We are excited to have been able to share preliminary results from what we believe, in terms of public safety, is the most important study of great whites ever conducted off of Cape Cod. We look forward to continuing to work towards the further development of drone-based systems for shark detection and also towards a greater understanding of shark behavior, as this is a fundamental key to both optimizing any shark detection system as well as to understanding its limitations. We would also like to thank all the people who have helped support and encourage these efforts. We had lots of help with drone spotting from so many people. We had some top-notch flying and spotting from both my dad, Dave Sexton, and Mark McCormick. We cannot thank the Cape Cod Ocean community enough for all their hard work and unwavering support. And of course, Catherine for inspiring all that we do, as well as narrating and editing some of our short films, not to mention doing a pretty good job flying the drone at times. We are very excited in regards to what we've been able to accomplish in just over a year. And this has been done by a small group of people, a handful of volunteers, and a budget of less than $10,000. A lot of work remains to complete and publish the results of this study, and much more with all the other things we plan to get done. But it does not hurt to have a nice office. With that, I would like to say thank you to everyone for taking the time to listen. I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Also, please feel free to get in touch with us via email. We are always looking for collaborators interested in research and development related to the goal of increased safety for recreational water users. Thank you very much.